Thank you for joining us for the DC Who's special virtual Wine Wednesday to celebrate Virginia Wine Month. Um, we're really excited to be tasting with rich wine. Um, I am Ashley Gresh. I work uh, in the Office of Engagement here at UVA. I am the Associate Director of Digital Engagement. Um, and I'm excited to welcome, welcome you to this virtual wine tasting um, to celebrate this alumni owned winery. Um, some quick housekeeping notes. We'd love to see your faces, but we ask that you remain on mute um, for the majority of the, of the event. Um, we wanna make sure that the team at Rich Wine has a chance to really explain a lot about um, their amazing, amazing varietals, and we wanna learn as much as we can. Um, go ahead and ask any questions you have in the chat. Um, we will be able to be answering those live or via um, text. And if you have any technical problems, you can privately message me and I can try and help you with that. Um, and I'm now gonna pass it over to Victoria who will kick off the event. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Hi, everybody. Again, welcome to our Wahoo Wine Wednesday. My name is Victoria Nguyen and I'm the Vice President of the UVA Club of Washington, DC. And it's my pleasure to give you a little taste around the world today. Um, we could not have made this happen without our wonderful partners, Rich Wine. Uh, they are two, uh, they are a double alum owned business and they made all of this happen, shipping the kits to your door, creating these, well, creating the wonderful kits, shipping it, and they are going to share some amazing information with you today. So without further ado, um, I am going to pass it over to Lance and Kristen. And everybody, make sure you have your wine samples ready. <laughs> awesome. Hello, everyone. It is great to see all your faces. We're super excited. This is a very large tasting for us. So it's something that we've been planning and looking forward to for quite some time. So happy to have it happening tonight. Um, so that being said, like a little bit about uh, ourselves first before we get started and jump into the wine. Um, I'm Kristen gardner Beal. Uh, half owner of Rich Wine RVA. Um, I graduated from UVA in 2012, uh, College of Arts and Sciences. I am uh, banking by day and wine at night. Um, so obviously this is my favorite part of uh, my work obligation. So we're excited to share a little bit more about Rich Wine with you before we get started, so. Yeah, and um, hi everyone. My name is Lance Lemon. Lemon like the fruit, pretty easy to remember. I have I've been blessed to have an acting career. I am an actor by day and by bread and butter, and it's I've been blessed to do some amazing film and TV work. And uh, the wine game has creeped up on me as a passion as my life in New York. It's, and, it's not muted on the screen. We can still hear that. The Bluetooth should be picking it up from your phone. And I am, and I'm class of yeah, two. Yeah, my phone. Oh, we all good? We're good. All right. Cool, 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 cool. You want to tell a little bit how we um how we got started? How we, how we met? How we got started? Yeah. And... So we've known each other forever. Like this goes back to like uh, high school days. Um, and so Lance was here ahead of me at UVA. Like same friend group. Um, I moved to New York maybe a year or two after you because I started out working in mm -hmm. Salt Lake City. Um, and then transitioned uh, same firm to New York City. And, you know, we ended up living, uh, what, a mile away from you and your yeah, wife? Yeah, I was yeah. like literally a mile away from him and his wife uh, in Brooklyn, which was awesome. So we hung out often there. And then, you know, as Lance was selling wine throughout New York, uh, and I was traveling the world for it, essentially, uh, we brought our ideas back to the table and said, we need to do something on our own because mm -hmm. it's something that we both love. Um, and so Rich Wine, RBA, and like the, the, the model has changed a lot, um, obviously as this year has changed a lot. And so originally we're starting out um, to become like a retail storefront where folks would come shop with us, um, uh, our selection of organic, biodynamic, natural wines. Um, in COVID, we quickly pivoted, pivoted to an online model. So our wine shop is all online. So if you see something that you like, on our site, you can order if you order before 4 p.m. If you're local, like in Richmond, we can get that wine to you same day. But if you live outside of the Richmond area, like we're able to ship it to you within the state of Virginia and DC. So we pivoted to that model um, just by way of us being like two Brooklynites. It's, you know, I love delivery. I love when things get delivered <laughs> to my door, especially if it's mail that I do want and am excited to use. Uh, so we wanted to give people the gift of having that be, you know, a wine option as well at the, at the end of a long day ahead of the weekend ahead of an event like we're happy to get you really awesome wines that we've hand selected that we've tasted that we believe in and making sure that uh the clean the clean farmed 
practices that we know are representative on uh, what we carry in store. Mm -hmm. so. we, we like to call them, we like to call them honest wines. And yeah. just like, just to touch on that a little bit more, that is our focus. So again, it's, it's the natural, organic, biodynamic, and sustainable at Minim Wines. It's just wines that are just clean farming practice, no herbicides, no pesticides, no chemicals in your wines, um, really focusing on just, just what's going into the soil and what's getting put into the vineyards. And that's going to produce something very special in your wine glass as well too. Um, so that's been a big focus for us. Just, just clean wine, you know, good, good wine that you can drink a lot of and, and, and feel good about it after you're yeah. done drinking it. Feel good wine. Feel so, good wine. so we said, I'd like to say we can jump into uh, the wine tasting. I hope everyone has their boxes. I hope you had the opportunity to refrigerate your wines. Um, we're going to be going through, there is a colorful circle at the top of each um, mm -hmm. glass. So uh, we'll denote which one we're speaking to. Um, so you can pour pour in your glass with us and have a tasting, but uh, yeah, you want to jump into it? Yeah, I want to, I kind of want to, I, I asked Victoria to just kind of send everybody like a little bit of a, of a way that I like to taste wine. And it's just, I, it's, it's a little bit of a tip. You don't have to necessarily do this all the time, but this is how I studied wine and how I've kind of learned to do it. But the main three things that I focus on when I drink wine is I like to focus on the balance of the wine, the acidity of the wine, and the finish of the wine. Those are just, those are three of, of 12 main things, but the the three of those are like pretty just generic kind of simple versions of what I like to do when I taste wine. When I say balance, I, I, I like to just see, you know, I, I want it to really just be balanced. I want it to taste smooth. I want it to have um, some nice tannic structure. If it's meant to be a full body wine, I want to taste full body wine. I don't want anything just to be kind of sticking out like a pin. Uh, the second thing is acidity. A, a little trick that I'm going to give everybody is when I taste wine and like acidity is literally just the mouth watering feel that you get when you drink wine. So what I do is I'll take a sip of wine and I'll literally sometimes let my mouth hang open a little bit. And the more that your mouth waters is kind of letting you know that the acidity is there in that wine. So if your mouth is just watering afterward, it's high acidity. If you don't have a lot of mouth water afterwards, it's it's, it's a low acidity wine and then kind of in the middle for medium. And then finish is just literally after you're done drinking the wine, however long that wine kind of stays into your mouth, if you can, if you can taste it 10 minutes or five minutes afterwards, that's what I like to call a lengthy finish. Those three things to me make up a great wine. Um, and so, yeah, those are, that's just the three kind of things I want you guys to focus on. And I ask everybody to kind of get a piece of paper and you can do this or not, but I do this and you can hold it up against a white piece of paper. Like I like to do like, so, and just kind of get a good color of the wine. Cool. You ready to start? Let's start. All right. So we're going to start with the first one. And the first one is going to be the blue dot. Uh, I'm sorry, the yellow dot. And we're going to start with this bottle right here. And this is actually the Famille Boer. And this is coming from, uh, forgive me, my Austrian is not the best, but this is uh, Niederreisterich, Austria. And this is coming from the Wagram region, which is basically Northeast Austria. And the grape on this bottle is going to be Gruner Vetliner. Okay, so I always like to tell people, if you like Gruner Vetliner, if you like Sauvignon Blanc, if you like Pinot Grigio, you like Gruner Vetliner. Okay, like this is, this is the exact same style, the exact same classic kind of crisp, uh, lemon herbana, wet stone, apple, um, a little bit of meadow flowers. And this one has like a little bit of a spicy finish to it. Um, so when you guys taste this, you should really get that. This is a great summer drink. Uh, if, if you can see, this bottle's a little big. It's a liter bottle. Um, so you're going to get about four, you're going to get five glasses out of a liter bottle. There's four glasses always in a wine bottle. Out of a liter, you're going to get about five. Um, a little bit more about this wine right here. Uh, this wine goes through stainless steel fermentation. So it sees no oak. So it's very clean. You're not going to get any oak flavors, all stainless steel. Um, it goes through whole cluster fermentation. And I know I may be saying a lot, but I'll do the best I can to break it down in Latham's terms for you guys just to kind of remember that. You can either pick grapes off of the vine and press them, or you can take the, or you can take the vines, the stems, the grapes, the leaves, and press it all together. And that is called whole cluster fermentation. Um, and that gives us a little bit more character to the wine, just a little bit more body, a little bit some, some gives some greener notes from yeah. the stems. Um, and this wine is actually sustainable. So like I said, all of our wines have our specific farming practices um, and this one is sustainable. And uh, yeah, I really enjoy this wine. This is one of my just go-to porch pounders. Don't think about it. It's a twist top, literally a twist top and you can just crack it open and, and enjoy it. Yeah. Wow, it is so light. That's yeah. so light. Yeah, and it has like a little bit of like, and. Uh, I know this sounds crazy. It's like floral notes. Yeah, floral, floral notes on the finish, which I absolutely love. So if you're into that, 
I'm, I'm really big into the wet stone notes, which is um, like literally like it smells like gravel or like when you step outside or you like smell like wet pavement. Um, and th that's just something that's like a, that's a very big kind of characteristic, especially in the Austria region. Uh, they have like a lot of like limestone soil, like a lot of like, like a gravel rock soil. And so, yeah, this wine is a, uh, this wine is a big winner for us and it's a leader and it's a great price. I, I don't know the price off the top of my head. It's I want to like say 16 yeah, it's like 16 bucks. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's awesome. So enjoy. Um, enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. And so also along the way, um, we are monitor monitoring, monitoring the oh, chat yeah, room. Sure yeah. So if you send questions in, we uh, will try to grab, but we'll also uh, have Q&A afterwards at the end. So. Yeah, Felicia perfect. said perfect yeah. for Thanksgiving turkey. Yeah. Right on. Bring right us to on. turkey. And um, this year is going to be, this is the 2019 actually. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the 2019 and here's the bottle. Yeah. And so for, that's, a, that's actually a great question. Um, Dana, how long can you drink it? Generally, when you're opening um, wines that are, you know, specifically organic, biodynamic, um, it's important to, to know that you can refrigerate both the red, the right, you can refrigerate all of your wines for one. Uh, for two, like I wouldn't leave anything uh, completely open after like a four to five day mark mm -hmm. and expect and not anticipate the flavor palette to change a little bit. Um, it may become a little bit more, um, I guess like pungent or ripe, if you will. Yeah, uh, and that's more good, vinegary. Yeah. yeah, and that's a good sign to know that like your wine is not, um, it, it's going on its way out. Yeah. Uh, so definitely when you open bottles as such, especially that come from just like a, a highly sustainable remit, it's important to kind of finish within like four to five days and then you can keep it chilled. Um, throw your red wines in the fridge. Absolutely, yeah. A after you open them, do not be afraid to throw them in the fridge. It gives it so much more of a life quality. White wines can last you about three to four days after opening, but red wines, like, you know, two days, literally, you're going to start noticing a change in a red wine. So that's why I say throw them in the fridge. It gives it like, it keeps it a little bit longer and then you can let it sit out and let it, and let it cool down a little bit. Um, and it'll last just a, a little bit longer. So yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Shall we? Perfect at the beach. Love the beach. Love this the beach. Love the beach. <laughs> <laughs> love the beach. Cool. All right. We're going to move on to the next one because we got five wines and I know, I know we got a little bit of, I could, I could tell. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna tap her out. Cool. We have the orange. We have the Vegas. No, orange. actually, next one we're gonna do is the. What do you want to so, do? Oh, for me now. Yeah. Oh, so this one has sticker. the orange sticker. Okay, but this is a. This is the rosé. After this, we're gonna go to the orange wine. So don't get them mixed up. Orange sticker is next. So number two is orange sticker. For me now. And I don't know if everybody can see this, but this is the Fermina. A little bit of a, a risque label, but. <laughs> we love it. We love it. We love great labels. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> love great labels. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this. This is one of my favorite rosés. All the wines in here, I've tasted them all. Everybody asks, like, oh, do you get to taste all the wines? I'm like, yes, uh, that, is, that is why I picked this job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is why I got into yeah. this career to drink wine. So this next wine is going to be the uh, 2019 La Bodega Panosa, Fermina Rosé. Um, and this is coming from Valencia, Spain. Um, this grape is 100% Monastrell. And uh, I guess the easiest, if you're not familiar with Monastrell, uh, I'll do the best I can to kind of give you like an easy breakdown of this. It's the same grape as Mouvedre, okay? So Mouvedre is, is, is its own grape. I mean, Monastrell was born in Spain. Mouvedre is the, how they pronounce it in, in Southern France. Um, it is a thick black skin grape. It is most likely to believe to have been originated in Spain, the grape of Monastrell, but you can find this grape um, ranging from Southern France to California to Australia. Um, so when you see Monastrell or when you see Movedre, they are the same grape. They just call it different. They just call it different things in different regions across the world. Um, this wine right here is, is so good. It is Brilliant strawberry color, uh, sh plum aromas. It's fresh, uh, has tons of fruit. It's elegant. It's clean. It's pleasing. Um, this is like another kind of summer red. Yeah. I mean, summer rosé that you yeah. can drink. Um, I also like this right now during the fall. Mm -hmm. um, it has a little bit of color to it. It's not like your typical salmon color rosé. It's a little bit darker in fruit. Monastrell is like a, is a deep skin fruit. Um, 
a little bit more about this winery really quickly, but so these guys are all organic, okay? And in Valencia, they own more than 800 hectares of, of vineyards and of vineyards and hectares breaks down to about one hectare breaks down to about four acres, 4.75 acres. Um, and so they are certified by the Valencia Organic uh, Agriculture Committee and they own 35% of the surface area and they produce more than 1,500,000 liters of wine. And they are one of the most important producers in Valencia for the organic. And they are just considered just amazing because of how large of a scale they are, but to still be considering that they are organic. And somebody just asked for alcohol percentage on this, and this is 13.5. Um, and always remember when you think about alcohol percentage on wine, legal, legal, it can be 1% under or it can be 1% higher. Um, it is, this could be 12.5 or it could be 14.5. <laughs> so whenever you drink wine, you look on the back, just know it can go either 1% lower or 1% higher. Um, this wine goes about 10 hours of maceration on the skins and it is, um, it's delicious, organic. And they started uh, farming organic in 1997. I love it. Yeah. Uh, yes. And what we will do, um, just chiming in and answer some questions, like we'll send out the names of the wines that we were tasting. I will send the alcohol content. Uh, Maureen, I hope you're excited for the beach on Sunday. Um, we'll connect offline, depending where you are. I think we probably can get you some wine by weekend. So, um, Someone said it's sort of hot on the back of the throat. And I, I agree. Yeah, it, yeah. you definitely, it coats your whole mouth. Um, and, and, that's, yeah. and honestly, um, so the Fermina um, and Bodega Pinoso also creates like a lovely like red wine and a white wine. So like these are wines that I consider to be like table wines, like they're easy drinking. You can bring them anywhere. Yeah. Um, like this one pairs nicely with like soft cheeses. Uh, so um, think about like your cheese plates or your time outside. Um, definitely another beach wine, like if you would. Um, this but is if you see some more like stuff for the Bodega, like it's worth giving, giving a try. Um, to like their flavor palette because it's so expansive as Lance says they produce so much wine every year so I think that the cool thing about this one it's $13.99 like this wine is literally $13.99 you'll find it for $15 and under and it's organic like yeah. you know like you can drink really good clean wine that's not I, I'm not knocking it but like you know you can go to your Kroger you can go to your food line and get big box wines I mean trust me my, my first wine was Apothic Red and I, I, I that was like my start into wine when I in 2000 and uh, 10 or whatever, 11 when I turned 21, but there are really good clean wines out there that are just, that are low in price. And so this one is, is a great value wine. Um, and that's really good. Awesome. Cool. Should we go to the what, blue sticker? Yeah. Blue sticker, orange wine. Wahoo. -wah. Here we go. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Dad <Great laughs> <one>. joke. <laughs> Dad joke. I just had a three-month-old. She likes to say that my dad jokes are getting low. I just have. He's I, warming up. I'm They're going to be up. so great. Yeah. Um, and I, I know a lot of people are going to ask what an orange wine is, and I know this is kind of like the new, the new fad and the new, the new hit, the new wave. Everybody's drinking orange wines. Everybody wants to know what an orange wine is. Um, that's the basis. There is no oranges in orange wine. I, I just you want to clear that up just very quickly. Not trying to be you know. Uh, root or anything like that but it, the orange wine literally goes to the color of the wine as you can see in your little glasses the the, the wine is orange it, it, it is a it is a orange color wine and this is actually great to taste next to a rosé um, because rosé goes through skin contact as well which gives it that rosé red color orange wines are white grapes that go through skin contact as well which gives it an orange color and when I say skin contact literally you can take a grape and peel off the skin. Um, you can just peel it back, right? So this one sits with the skin and it gives it a little bit of color. It gives it a little bit more flavor. It gives it some texture. Um, and that's why they call them orange wines. Um, it's literally because of the color of the wine. Um, this next wine is, is awesome. And it's a great value orange wine. I think we picked some really cool wines that are value. And then we have like the last two were they're going to go up there a little bit, but they're, they're still really delicious. But this is going to be the Bodega Serra La Barca Vegas Alta. So I don't know if you guys can see that. And it literally says orange wine on the label. Yeah. It has a wax top too. And I'm a, I love wax tops. I don't know why. I just love when They're people cool. put wax yeah. tops on their, on their wines. This is coming from the Estremadura, uh, uh, Spain. So this region is just right of Portugal. So it's about, 
I want to say Midwest. It's not too Middle West. It's literally like you look at Spain on a map. It's like it's like close to the West, but it's almost kind of in the middle. Um, the grapes on this are going to be native to the region. So you really won't hear about these grapes a lot, but it is 50% 50, 50 Pardina and then 50% Catiana. Um, Cayetana, excuse me. Um, orange wines to me have a, I think someone just said it like almost like, I like to think of it like a caramel, nutty, kind of like sherry kind of flavor to them. Yeah. Um, and, and these are some of like my favorite kind of wines that I'm drinking right now. I really love like the funkiness of them. Um, some orange wines, I'm not gonna lie, you'll get that have like a, they a have like fermentation, a, like sediment at the bottom. Yeah. And like you see it in the bottle, which is pretty cool. We drank a wine the other day and I mean, there was just sediment all in the bottom of them. They were funky. It's, it's, they're, they're nasty. Like, to me, the more funky the wine, in my opinion, the better. Like, I like a wine that smells like a barnyard that <laughs> some, some cow just stepped on. I know that's weird, but it's just, that's just where I'm at in my wine career right now. Yeah. Um, dry, always usually dry. Yeah. Mineral, floral, and um, nutty. Um, um, what was I about to say? You want to say anything? No, pour it up. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> KG's like, can you pour my wine in my glass for me so I can try it? <laughs> Yes, Good. and yeah. I always like to smell like smell the wine first just to see what I'm about to get. Yeah, um, I mean, and we're we're actually moving pretty good. So like, yeah, yeah we've been through three wines, we've been through three wines in ten minutes. But so I'll give you a little bit of time. I love a good swirl. I swirl everything. I swirl my milk. I swirl grape juice. <laughs> I swirl my beer. I just swirl it, and I, I love to give it a good forty degree tilt. Give it a good nose. Get all that, I, and, and it's weird. I'm I'm in, I'm studying right now. I'm in my I'm in my WSET right now. But a lot of things I do is I'll. I'll I'll take a whiff through the nose and then breathe out through my mouth. It just kind of lets it just travel through the whole palate. And, um, and another thing, like, if you just really want to get, like, some tasting notes, go to, like, Kroger and just, like, take the fruit and just smell it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly. <laughs> just, just, I mean, granted, COVID just, times right now, don't put it back. Don't put but, it back. Like, just smell, smell it. Smell it and take it with you. Yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> just smell it. <laughs> I mean, it, the more you can just get your hand, I, I'm constantly just smelling um, – a lot of just, I'm just I'm always smelling stuff I know that sounds weird but like I'm just constantly just sticking things but it also up. helps to like you continue to refine your palate like yeah. if you will um because like you know like your senses up here are connected so um and it's nice too because like when you're um we've started to note a lot more of these wines more intently because something that's also important to us like as Lance is studying and just kind of like out on our own like you know being able to pair these up uh correctly in some of the consulting work that we you know do for folks so Tony said that so. new that new baby smell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first thing my sister said when she's like, I just want to smell the baby. I was like, that's weird. <laughs> but I guess that's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you mean by like oxidized? Um, that's a that's a that's a pretty good question. Um, I, I mean, like without getting into like too many technical terms, uh, there's a little bit of SO2, like so sulfur has to be added into wines. When people say that, like, I don't want wines with sulfites, like it's, it's kind of inevitable because wine naturally produces its own sulfite. So you're going to always have a little bit. When people like talk about, animal, yeah, just yeah. a fine amount. I think when people talk about like natural wines, they talk about wines and it, it's a, such a loose term, but legally a natural wine has to have less than, I want to say 0.05 of, sulf, of sulfur in it. So there's no additive SO2 to the wine. But when you think about shipping wine from Europe or shipping wine from across the world over to the United States on boats, and they have to be in these shipping containers for so long, they have to add some kind of sulfur to it just to let it, just to let it, because it's going to sit so long. I mean, it could be on a shipping container for three months, you know, yeah. and, and the longer it sits without those additives, the, the wine is going to change in the bottle. So that oxidative state for that is just, the oxidation is just kind of like a little bit of a, I got a little bit of a lift to the to the wine you know what I mean so it's so it's not just so flat it's not just it's literally not just grape juice it does have yeah. some kind of flavor to it um added sugar too is a big thing a lot of our wines a lot of the people that I like to work with don't add a lot of sugar yeah. but again it's another component that has to go into wine for for complexity just for balance a lot of like the big box stores and wines that you see they they do add a lot of wines and and I, I I'm not, I'm not, I'm no scientist or doctor. Yeah, a lot of sugar. So that may be what adds hangover. So like, I don't like a lot of wine. I don't like a lot of wines with a lot of added sugar. 
Um, so that is a lot of questions that I ask, but most wines don't add sugar. Rieslings, you can have off dry, medium to like uh, sweet, and they add some sugar to it, but that's just the style of the wine right. that people like. This wine is organic and biodynamic. Um, these guys are one of the only producers in the Extremadura regions. Actually, I want to say they are the, I'm sorry, they are the only producer in the Extremadura region in, in Spain that is organic. So it's a big deal for these guys to have this 1899, which is a very, very good price for um, orange wine. Um, usually they sit, they usually sit pretty high, usually around like the 23 to, to, to own up. Yeah. Um, and one plug I'd say, because um, orange wine is so fun and fascinating and it's something that we've been exploring just a lot more. Um, there are a couple of like sparkling labels that are out there. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our favorites is like the Paleo Caricio. Mm -hmm. It's, um, that's Greek, right? Mm -hmm. We have it. We're sold out. I'm out of stock. It'll be here tomorrow. Uh, yeah, it'll be here tomorrow. But uh, it's a Greek orange wine. It's, it has a sparkling finish to it. Um, it's quite lovely. Um, what are we, I thought we had it with the other night. Yeah, we had it with, uh, I think we just had it by itself. <laughs> Anyway, all right, yeah, we, had it, we had it by itself. We didn't pair it. We, just we, had, it. we had it by itself. But um, no, that's a, that's another fun one. So like, I will say like the variations out there. It is the it is the Greek one. And, yes, and fun to fun to explore. So, um, and to be all these wines are ready to drink now. Um, I, you can you can age them if you want. Um, you know, yeah. you know, the longer they get, you know, they're they're going to see significant changes. The last two that we get to are most likely better to kind of lay down and, yeah. and and give some time to them if you really wanted to. But these wines, these white wines, you drink them now. Drink yeah. them now. They're they're yeah. meant to be drink um drunk right now and um. I, yeah, if anything, I would, I, I tend to like really only age like red yeah, wine. Yeah. Um, the rest I don't want to save for too long and um, stuff like that. And then we can also go over like what's important to like cork, like making sure wine isn't corked and stuff later. Like, yeah, we have, we'll add some more fun facts later. So, yeah, yeah. All right. In the interim, I'm getting tapped because I'm, what I'm, what do you call me? I'm winded. What is yeah, it? That's a long winded. She says I talk too much, but <laughs> I like it. So, what can I say? All right. So this next one is like a little bit of, I guess, we threw in a little special one for you yeah. guys. And it's, uh, yeah. um, and, and this is such a Wahoo moment and, and something that we're like extremely proud of. And, and our friend is, 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 is amazing. Um, this is going to be the red sticker. And this is um, the 2016 Delaplaine Cellars. And some of you guys might have visited Delaplaine. It's actually up in Northern Virginia. Um, yeah, it's in Delaplaine, Virginia, uh, mm -hmm. very close to Middleburg. Uh, mm -hmm. Our friend Nick Jordan owns it. Um, Shout out to so, Nick Jordan. Yeah, wahoo wah. Um, so yeah, so we're going to be trying uh, one of his favorite reds. Yeah, and I'm actually going to start with like a little bit of a, 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 a background on Nick because he couldn't join us tonight. He's a busy man, but uh, he is a political and social thought major from UVA. Uh, he worked at Sugarleaf Vineyards his third and fourth year, and that's what got him into wine. Um, he fell in love with wine uh, after visiting Delaplane, and then I think it went on, it went on listing. I want to say in two thousand and nineteen. When do we start? Which one? Nineteen. Yeah. No, it, yeah. No, it had to be nineteen. Yeah, because he yeah. bought it last year. Yeah, he bought it in two thousand and nineteen. Yeah. Uh, they made the governor's case last year. Top twelve Governor's wines Cup, in the yeah. in the Commonwealth. Um, and they're ready to make some wine for UVA. And uh, Nick is awesome. He's been a big supporter of Rich Wine. He's been a huge fan of our wine, just what we're doing. We knew him from um, some undergrad. good, some undergrad times, some incarnate memories, prevail times. And uh, and he's a good, uh, he's a good, he's a good guy. Um, and we we love his wine. We love going to visit him. But this is going to be their Williams Gap uh, blend. And I was thoroughly impressed with it. Uh, unfortunately, we don't carry the the Delaplane wines. They self-distribute. Uh, yeah, they self-distribute. But yeah. what's really cool is they have um, a wine membership program. Um, if anybody's looking to join, if you're up there, you can go uh, pick up your wines. I think quarterly, um, he mentioned. Yeah. Or if nothing else, like they have a fantastic uh, tasting room. And they just added a huge outdoor area. So you can sit on the terrace and stare off into the mountains and enjoy enjoy your wine. Karen, this is a red blend. It is going to be 50% Cab Franc, 20%, 27% Merlot, and 23% Petit, Petit Bordeaux. So this is like your kind of typical Bordeaux blend, blend that you see and like that they kind of do in Nifera style and, and here in Virginia. Um, it is one of their signature reds. It spins, it spin, it's aged in 45% new oak, so you are going to get that kind of that oaky feel to it. And when I say 45% new oak, like this is this is oak that is is 45% new. It's not old oak. It's not 30 years old oak where the oak is not imparting on it. This is 45% new. So this may be six years old, five years old, and it's gonna, you're gonna start to get that oaky kind of fruit to it. It's red and black fruit, um, a lot of tobacco, pencil shavings. I know that sounds crazy, but you do get it. Um, toasty, 
ripe cherries, pomegranate, black currant, cloves, um, and this lingering tannins. I, I, um, and uh, this is the Delaplane Williams Gap. And it's awesome. Mm -hmm. I really am enjoying their wines right now. I think their winemaker, he's doing a phenomenal job there. Uh, they hired a really, a really great guy to, uh, to take over and kind of rebuild the brand. And I can't wait. Uh, I'm hoping that he starts distributing it so we can really kind of just tie everything together. So, yeah. yeah. And it's really cool. I like this label. So what you see on this label is the mountains and the view uh, at Delaplane, which is also really cool. Um, and like the geo coordinates right here on the on the line model. Yeah. So um, simple but awesome. It goes a long way. I learned something the other day, which was pretty interesting. I don't. It's it, no vineyards in in Virginia can be certified organic. They can practice and work organic. Um, that this the certification I want to say was something. And I was talking to Nick about this, and I got to do a little bit more Maybe homework. Like a twenty five year mark though. Like yeah. your soil has to be organic for like twenty. Yeah, years. for like a certain amount of years, yeah. and I don't think any of the vineyards really here have had the time to establish that um, that recognition. That recognition of yeah, I don't know. I got to do I a little bit more homework on there it. There might be one though, because I think the one next to Pip, like near Pimp, Pippin Hill, mm -hmm. like when you go all the way down the drive, I I'm blanking on the. It's a tiny one. Mount Ida. No. no, not Mount Ida, but it's like Pippin Hills here and you can continue down the road. If anyone yeah. knows what that is. Um, oh man, I'll think yeah. of it. But yeah, like I think that might be the only one, clo the closest one to becoming. Yeah, Dana yeah. asked, what would the, this be good to pair with um, by itself? <laughs> um, right, yeah, like honestly, your your meats, honestly, yeah. lamb, lamb, flank steak, um, any, anything, anything that's really gamey for like these bold bodied, like red wines, um, would be great. Um, it definitely will cut, you know, cut any meat, um, burger, a, just a juicy burger, a red, red sauce, pizza, pair with a fire. Pasta, yes. Laura, yes. Anything like that. Chocolate. chocolate? Yes. Always. <laughs> exactly. Chocolate. Chocolate. Um, maybe nothing like crazy spicy. Yeah. Um, like this may enhance like some spicy food. So if you have it, it might kind of like. It might, it add might, fuel to it the might fire. add fuel to the fire. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, G Melissa said Gab Gabriel, I don't, that's, oh, Gabriel Ross. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's the cutest property I think that we have here in the state. I'm uh, sorry. I thought that was a food. <laughs> no, <laughs> I was like, no, I don't know what he, that is, he, but it sounds he, delicious. Gabriel Ross, <laughs> Gabriel Ross basically started the Virginia wine trail. Uh, <laughs> He's like, like, yeah, I got you. I was everybody like, like start farming. No, I got you. Like yeah. I'm sorry. Ago. Forgive my ignorance. <laughs> on that, but I was like, well, loving cup. Yes. Yes. Elizabeth. Loving yes, cup. Yeah. Loving cup is the closest to, uh, being the organic property here if they aren't already. So, um, uh, but yeah, Gabriel Rouse has a fantastic uh, property in Virginia. Um, I definitely read super that Super cute. Yeah. I got so excited. Talking, I was like, oh, that food. sounds this delicious. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, but yeah, great stuff. Victoria, how are we doing on time? We're doing very well. We're at 7.38 and we're on our fourth line, so we can take a few more questions or we can just yeah. take a longer Q&A towards the end. Um, but yeah, doing really good. Uh, yeah. People have, like I said at the beginning, lots of questions. Everybody wants to learn. So feel free to just keep answering those questions and posting on social media. A little blur for everyone. If you're going to put it on Instagram, make sure you tag Rich Wine and tag us as well. Um, but yeah, keep going. I'm having a great time. Awesome. Yeah. And I hope everybody's enjoying. I mean, like this is our, this is one of our biggest tastings that we've done. And I'm, I'm, I, you know, we're just, we're so blessed and just pleased that everybody is such a, to do this for our alma mater. Yeah. So. And we're happy that it's UVA yeah, like first yeah. round. So this is great yeah. for us. Um, Maureen asked what's like a full body mean? Like, um, so full body wines to me, just literally kind of the way it sits on the middle of your, on, on the middle of your palate, it, it literally carries weight to it. Um, I know that's kind of crazy. Like it, it, it coats your mouth. Um, it's heavy on the palate. Like it's nothing that's just like light and watery. Like the Fermina is light body. Yeah. You remember how light the texture of that wine yeah. is? This and red is more full. And matter of like fact, if, medium you, to full. if yeah. you have a little bit more of this red wine in your glass, this is a perfect time to pour, to show that, to hold up that white paper and hold it behind it. Or if you have a stem um, and look at it. And what I like to do is when you look at the edge of the wine, like literally, like if you were to hold it at a 40 glass. degree angle, yeah. right? So KG can hold it for you at a 40 degree angle. Hold it for me. Oh yeah. So if you hold it at a 40 degree angle, right? And then right here at the edge of the glass, it's obviously pretty light, okay? Like there's a light rim. There's a light rim. If it stays light to the middle of that wine, it's usually a lighter body wine. But if this wine right here is pretty dark as yeah. it goes down, right? That's usually like a sign of like a more full bodied wine. Yeah, um, and not a lot of sugar in this wine. Yeah, also, honestly, if you tilt your glass, 
Yeah, and normally you can taste like, the fingers. Yeah, the fingers down. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's it's a, a it's a slow drip, but it's not. Um, and if you have a stem in your glass, another good way to do it is like another full body wine. Is it like if you look straight down into your glass, if you can see where their stem starts yeah. in the glass, then that's another good explanation that like okay, that may be like medium. It's medium in color, so most likely it's medium body. If you can't see the bottom of your glass, it's most likely a full body yeah. wine. Yeah. Yeah. And it's same thing for, you know, but I, I don't like to do that with whites and whites that much because it's kind of tough. You can have some full body whites. Usually they exist in Chardonnays, um, Chin and Blancs, um, some other more funky kind of blends out there. But yeah. Yep. All right. All right. One of the last one. Okay. One we already had. One. We have our little bottles too. Of this we one. have the Pepeno. This is one of my favorite wines, Same. and I don't know if it's going to be a crowd favorite. I'm interested to see what a lot of people think, I, I, and if you drink a lot of wine, great. If you don't, this is going to be something very different that you've never tasted before. Um, this is the Papino, and I'm going to show you here in one second. As soon as I pour it in my glass. And like, we can kind of... Hmm? While you're getting set up, somebody wanted to ask or wanted to know where your store is located or your, yeah, so, your headquarters. Yeah, so we are, everything is online right now. So that's where all of the orders will take place and then we can work on delivery or we can ship it to you. Um, but we are located in Richmond, Virginia uh, on the Manchester side of the bridge uh, uh, at 2601 Mari Street. And we are at... Um, yeah, building two. So we're yeah. in this cute little incubator facility. There are a lot of cool startups um, that are around us. If you're familiar with like Nightingale ice cream. Yeah, Nightingale uh, ice cream. Te here. What is it? Texas Bloody Mary mix. A lot of those folks we work with on a day to day basis. So we're all here together. Yeah, Reservoir um, Whiskey is here. Um, uh, Healthify. Healthify. There are a lot bars, of UVA yeah. alums in here. Uh, There's actually a ton of UVA in here. Yeah. It's, it's kind yeah. Of crazy. Yeah. Um, the management UVA. Yeah. Uh, so owners UVA. Um, so it's a great space. Uh, so if you come down, there are a lot of alumni around. Um, but we are here in this uh, in this uh, facility, and like you know, out of our room, we do what you know, we do like private tastings, whatever the mm -hmm. case may be, um, private in home, private tasting around the table, um, and just kind of like people come come and see us. So if you're in the area, feel free to send us a yeah, note. Send us a note. Come Stop by. Yeah. Um, taste some wine. A lot of the times we have a lot of reps in here all day, every day. And, you know, uh, you might pull up at the right time and uh, can tell us what you think about what we should carry. So yeah. keep that in mind. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the goal in the future is to have a storefront just with obviously with everything going on right now, it's just kind of, we pivoted a lot and went to like an online kind of uh, uh, like more aspects. So hopefully when, when everything's said and done, we'll have a physical shop where people can really come and engage, grab bottles, like a walk-in kind of storefront. And just right now with that our business model just completely shifted once COVID happened. But yeah. if, if you're in town, please shoot us a message. Come by, say what's up. I, I'm, I'm going to be drinking wine. Yeah, that's <laughs> what we do. <laughs> All right, last bottle is going to be the Papino. I don't know if you guys can see this. If you can see it again, that's the Papino. A little bit on the back right there. Another big bottle, another leader. If you ask Kristen, I love big bottles. I am a sucker for anything bigger than the regular, <laughs> regular anything wine bottle. Anything milliliters. bigger than 750, I want it. If it's 1.5, if you ever throw in a party or you have like guest over, go for a 1.5 or go for like a three liter, spend that little bit more money because it's, it's cheaper than buying more Multiple 750 bottles. bottles. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So buy a bigger bottle because yeah. you save more money and then you could just, it's, it's just a great. So this is the Louise Antoine Louis Papino. And this is coming from the Mali Valley in Chile. Um, this grape is 100% Pais. It's an indigenous grape to the Chile region. Um, and the first thing you get is such a pronounced nose. It is smoky. It, you can smell smoke as soon as you, as soon as you put it up to your nose. Um, it, it has like a, uh, a smoky kind of char kind of note to it. And that is just a really characteristic of where this wine comes from. Um, in the back right here, uh, you'll see these mountain vineyards right here. And in this area, I want to say it's not this one. I want to say it's like right over here, but they, they, there's like a little bit of, I want to, this, the soil type gives it this, this kind of smoky, peppery, yes, Karen, um, kind of soil. Uh, the soil right here is just so unique. Um, 
It's a funky taste to it. Oh, it's yeah. funky. Yeah, it's funky. It's smoky. It is uh, goes great with a barbecue. Mm-hmm. I love this. I I chill. I I drink this wine cold, um, and that's why I kind of ask you guys to like kind of um, yeah charred ends, Karen. I ask you guys to chill all your reds because this wine with like a little bit of a chill to it is so delicious. It's 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 glue goo style. It's really chuggable. Um, so. Louis Antoine is the winemaker. He first arrived in Chile in 1998. Um, he, he was a restaurant worker, um, and he just, he's just a really big pioneer for making wines in the Chile region. Um, and this wine is, is pretty cool because in his region in Chile, they have a, he works with a lot of other winemakers. And so on the back right here, it's called Familia Sergio Perez. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, and so this wine right here, is actually made by Sergio Perez himself. And he's an 82 82 year old, old. he's 82 years old. He's an 82 year old winemaker and just really just imparting his style and and love on wine. Um, And and this guy is just a pioneer for making like really just radical choices in Chile. Like it's such an, it's, I don't wanna say it's such an old world kind of uh, place, but like he's really come in and just started just making different kind of wines. This is, this wine just, it sticks out from, all the rest of the wines. I mean, the orange wine has its own kind of thing, but this wine right here is just is, is superb in its own way. If you're making anything with like peppercorn, you know, I would like definitely pair this alongside it, like a really good like ragu. Yep. Um, I'm all about like deep red sauce, like pasta and pizza. Yep. So you bring this out and it's just gonna pair very nicely. Yeah, so so uh, Luis is making natural wine. So th- this wine is considered a natural wine. Uh, he's literally crushing grapes, putting it into the glass. There's no other, there's nothing else that is going into this wine. It's, I'm, I'm pressing grapes. It's going into the bottle. There's, there's no additives. There's no sugar. There's no, I, I, I literally he, these, if you could step on the grapes and you could put a spout underneath of it and put the bottle up to the spout, that's what he's doing. Yeah. And you can definitely tell with the color, if you hold your glass up, there's texture to it. It almost has like a slight effervescence to it, has like a slight grip to it. You can, you can literally like feel it sparkle on your mouth a little bit. Um, yeah, and so I really, um, I really love this wine. It's it's been it's been a it's been a staple for me. My wife's not the craziest fan of it, and she always hates when I bring it home because it's just like what I like to drink, and it's a leader. <laughs> um, but it, it's a phenomenal wine. I, I'm I'm glad we got to end with this, and I, I tried to take you guys in a route that was white wine, orange wine, uh, just a route that made sense for your tasting. Uh, this wine is twenty two ninety nine. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. 21, yeah, 22. 22 uh, in that range. And again, it's a liter bottle, so. Liter of good red. Yeah, you're getting big um, uh, Yeah, and I just wanted to follow up on a couple of questions that I saw uh, come through. Um, let me just scroll back very quickly. Virtual wine tastings. Yes, we do them. We've done them at a corporate level. Um, they're a lot of fun. And so we do the same thing. We mail your, mail the kits out. Um, and if it, we've done some in celebration for like people leaving, uh, certain firms and like birthdays and stuff like that. So it ends up being very fun. So feel free to send us a note, like offline about that info at Rick Twine RBA and then Victoria will send out our contact information. Um, uh, Dana, so if you buy a case, um, if you're, if you're purchasing wine, how long can it sit? If it, the wine, uh, obviously, you know, will come to you corked, it's fine. Like, I would just make sure it's in a place mm-hmm. where if you have a wine fridge and at 55 degrees, um, you know, is great, is a great temperature to yeah. keep wine for a long period of time. Or even if you keep it out at uh, room temperature, yeah. fine. Don't keep it in your car. Yeah, don't let it get yeah, above 70 I, on a cont- 75 had, or for a consistent basis. I had right? three yeah. bottles of champagne pop in my car the other day, and it just wasn't a good look. Um, it just, <laughs> it just, it just wasn't a good It was this summer, and it was a hot day, and I forgot I left them in the car. And I, and they burst, they literally all exploded in my car. So keep them around like 65, you know, if you can just keep it like room temperature, just in a cool area in your closet, um, or just, just, just don't, just don't make it, just don't keep it out in the sun or don't let it get too cold and freeze. Yeah. And um, another important thing is like, keep light off of the bottle. Yeah. Um, if keep it in a cabinet or something like that. Um, and you know, it'll last a while. Uh, cause li- like, as Lance mentioned earlier, a lot of this is coming to uh the retailers from a warehouse being shipped over so there's a um a long there's a long shelf life to the one that you have um if corked appropriately um and so it'll continue to last if just stored in the right way yeah um yeah some other messages down here you want to talk to um 
fucking cool shit. Mm -hmm. You guys absolutely are some of the best hosts we've ever had. So oh, uh, let me echo what people are saying. You're having a good time. Thank it's nice. Um, I sometimes switch from speaker view to the entire grid, and when everybody just tips their glass back, I'm like, man, it's as if we're doing an in-person event or in-person tasting again. I definitely miss that, but so happy y'all could join us virtually. Yeah, uh, maybe you, we could do a, a, a cheers. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, I got one. Yeah. Of my we we could do a, like a quick cheers, and maybe Victoria, can you? Is it possible to get like a, a gallery view, like snapshot of that? Yeah, is everybody awesome. cool with that? Yes, I have been doing some uh, screenshots, but let's do uh, hold your glass up, everybody. I'm going to yeah. do the orange wine. Hold on. Yeah. And, I'm and, doing the and officially, just to let you know, when you ever cheer somebody, you're supposed to look them in the eyes. Um, and there's bad luck if you don't look the person in the eyes. And I won't tell you what that bad luck is because it's inappropriate, but there is a bad luck version to it. So make sure whenever you cheer somebody, you look them in the eyes and you cheers them. Salute. And you drink your wine. Yep. All right, so everyone just hold it up for a little bit because there's two screens of people and I wanna make sure I get everyone, okay? So, all right, cheers, wahoo wah, hold those glasses up, print screen. All right, one second. That looks super good. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to the next slide. So keep holding them up because you might be on both. Uh, okay, all right, second group of people, cheers. 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 Okay. Amazing. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Wahoo -wah. Wahoo -wah. Yes. And when things normalize, we hope to see everyone like yeah. either here or at football games. Um, definitely let us know. Like, don't be strangers. We love doing events like this. We love, um, you know, like hosting just by the by nature of the you know individuals that we are. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And so if there's anything that we can help you with, wine related going forward, whether it be you know, if you're thinking about like wine to get for I mean, yeah, somebody asked about like, like, a, like that, a like, private, a private, taste, like, just please reach we, out to we us. We do We're, it all. We do yeah. it all. We do a lot of consulting on the back end. So yeah. wine is, you know, our forefront, but we do a lot of consulting work, like pairing wines to your menu, et cetera, stuff like that. And we're just happy to help. Give us a call. You yeah. let us know what you're cooking for dinner. I'm like happy to help you think about what wine yeah. you should have with it. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're doing a tasting for a couple um, in a couple in next weekend. Yeah, next week. Next weekend, we're yeah. going to their house. We we kind of consulted. And Date night, they have like a young child. They were like, "Can you do wine?" I was like, "Yeah, we we'll do it at your house. <laughs> Don't worry about it." Uh, I think we have a we have a really interesting comment in here. Is somebody know recognizes you from the UVA days? Yeah, dance marathon together back at UVA That's days. Awesome. Yeah, that was the trustee <laughs> club. I want to say I. I uh, Oh, Meredith, oh, I can't see you, but I guarantee, hit me up. I guarantee you, I probably know who you are. That's so funny, man. That's, That's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's so awesome. Well, um, so if you guys have additional questions, pop them in now. We are going to uh, pick some winners for some giveaways in a few uh, minutes. So I want to make sure we impart as much knowledge. Well, I don't want to say we. I am, I'm the one learning here. You guys impart mm -hmm. as much knowledge as you can within the next couple of minutes. So ask away, people. Yeah, and we usually like update our website on Friday with like a bunch of inventory. Uh, blessed that we're like been so busy and, and just kind of slammed. And since it's such a new business, people are like really supporting us. So we really love it. Um, so like usually on Fridays, we get like a bunch of wine in. So like if you see some stuff on the website right now that is just out of stock, just give it a second. I promise on Friday, it's just, it's going to come it's in. It's coming it's, back in. It comes it's, in hot and, and it I, goes hot too. And so. it's been great to do this event because October, as you all know, is Virginia Wine Month. Um, and so we kicked this off. We featured um, a pet gnat from Early Mountain. Yeah, let me grab you it. You want to show it? Yeah. Uh, a pet gnat from Early Mountain that's uh, that's been really great. And uh, we have a couple of Virginia wines like in store from Early Mountain, like the Foothills. This yeah. pet gnat is really cool. It's a funky bottle. So this is uh, our um, this is our wine of the month right now for Virginia Wine Month. Yeah. It's the Early Mountain Vineyards Pet Gnat Red. Um, they only make. Uh, 50 cases of this a year. We were lucky to get our hands on two cases of it. And we have one more reserve just in case, but we're giving 5% off this bottle right now. It is absolutely delicious. And for anybody that doesn't know what a pet net is, is it is the, it is the, it is pet net natural. It is the, it is how bubbles actually started. It goes through a fermentation in the bottle, which allows the bubbles to occur right so like it, it is delicious. This it's is unique, like, it's fun. Whoever said Thanksgiving wine earlier, this is Thanksgiving wine all day. Yeah. And also for all the who's who joined us uh, today, like as a thank you, we want to offer, we have a special code for you guys. Mm -hmm. It's who wine five. Um, we're giving 5% off like your order. Um, and yeah, and we're excited. Like our Rolodex, you see stuff online. It's out of stock. Like Lance said, we're getting it more in, but send us a note if you want it, we'll order it for you. Yeah. We'll get it to you. 
Um, oh, is that uh, lowercase H O O W I N E? All caps. All caps. Go big or go home. Okay. All caps. Who wine five? So yeah, absolutely. Um, anything else, Lance? Uh, no, but Virginia for favorite Virginia winery. Uh, I, I love the guys at Early Mountain. When I was in New York, yeah. I they they showed me so much support at the two shops that I run. Um, they are they are just uh, phenomenal people, and I really love what they're doing wine wise. Um, if you and ever get, food wise, and food they wise, man, they had, the food was good. Yeah, <laughs> like the food was so good. <laughs> yeah. Um, the food was fantastic. And okay, fun fact about early early Mountain that we learned because we were up there Thursday. We were Thursday last Thursday. Um, so uh, they have forty labels. Yeah. They have forty labels. So I mean, go up there <laughs> and treat yourself to like a day. And they have fantastic food, so you could spend a spend a while there. Yellow um, wine was this one, uh, Jackie. Yeah, the boar. Yeah, the bar. No, um, and then so, um, so Early Mountain's great. Um, Mount, Ida Mount Ida is another favorite because Mount Ida also has beer and wine. So it's a happy, what it's a, uh, what is it? Compromise. If you want someone it's wants gorgeous. beer. But it's, it's gorgeous. And they also have great food. Um, Especially Gabriel Rouse is another one. Uh, if you catch it, because I know he has different hours, but you catch him on a Sunday from 10 to 4, they have a great lunch, and you can go taste, have a cute tasting in their um, cute wine place, like it's in the woods. Della Plains is awesome for, like, all the views, and a, a fun day in Middleburg. Laura, that's a great question. You have any ciders? Yeah. Laura, this is awesome. This is, so this is, um, and I know we, I'm going over, but this is Patois Cider right here. This is a good friend of mine named Patrick. He's a young guy making wine out of the Quaker Run uh, uh, vineyards in, in, um, um, uh, Middleburg where, yeah. uh, where, uh, a lot of early mountain gets where early mountains at. Yeah. And, uh, this guy is doing some, and this is a pet net cider. This is awesome. And if you look at this label, it's actually the, um, it's actually the heat index mm -hmm. for the, 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 the month or the, I guess the year that he made his wine and these purple, you see those purple kind of stripes. Those are days that it rains. So the darker it is, is heavy rainfall, but he's doing amazing amazing stuff um it's p-a-t-o-i-s yeah yep patois cider and this he's bottling steve and uh it's produced and bottled in charlottesville but he's he's getting um uh apples from quaker run orchard in madison county and i honestly think he's gonna blow up he's doing some really cool stuff yeah so we do carry ciders uh in december we're gonna start carrying some vermouths um we're gonna start carrying some um um what do we taste gin is it not gin, not no, gin. what's the other thing uh, aperol yeah aperol. we can yeah. do aperol as well so those are some things that we want to start working on as well but i'm a wine guy and i got to get to the uh i got to get to those things and pretty soon here yeah so i think what we can do is we can pick our winners and there's still a lot of questions yeah. coming through um yep. if you guys want to stay after eight o'clock we're here we already agree that we can keep going and keep talking and keep uh, having a great time with you all but for those of you who may need to run i want to make sure all's fair and that we um pick the winners from all of the attendees how does that sound you guys fantastic good okay so for everyone um here i have typed all your names into the chat uh, into a random name generator on my computer. Uh, we have three prizes to give away today as a huge thank you for supporting the DC Who's, for supporting Rich Wine, um, and for supporting, you know, great businesses. So we've got a, a UVA watercolor painting. Actually, I, I need to go get that and show everybody. Um, we have a set of glasses from Rich Wine and uh, a bottle. Is it of their own choosing or one of them? I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, Whichever. Yeah. So one bottle, uh, a set of glasses, and let me go grab the uh, watercolor painting to show people really quickly. So this was done by a UVA alum, 2017. She, during quarantine, got into uh, watercolor painting, and so she has painted a lovely, oh gosh, sorry, my background. Um, UVA uh, logo, it says UVA underneath it. You can frame it, it's really cute. So those are, are our prizes. All right, first winner tonight, Oh, it's cute. You even like a little name right, around. Yeah. All right, Anne Flack. Let's see, Anne, are you still on here? You are wonderful. So, Anne, we will um, send you an email because uh, we have your email uh, from the registration. So, Anne, congratulations. Uh, you are one of our winners. Um, there, or, sorry, I know you said you all were going to do the, did you have the names picked out? Did you pick your two winners? We can, I'm sorry. We can, I, we can scroll through. I prepared the same thing on my side. So. Oh, you did? Okay. Well, I want to let you announce the uh, Rich Wine Prizes then. 
So, cool. all right, so we can do, we'll do a bottle and we'll do two glasses. Like we'll get the, uh, our frost glasses. Yeah, right we have right a here. special edition of like our white, our, our frost glasses just for the fall time. And so they go, Let's they're pretty see. cool. Okay, hold on. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. All right, so for the frost glasses, do we have Jackie Lanes on the line? Jackie Lanes. We do. She's still on. Congratulations, Jackie. You have two wonderful glasses. Two wonderful glasses. Okay. <laughs> Jackie, yes! yes. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, amazing. Okay, and then now we need to give out the bottle. I'm just going to flick through one yeah, more Yeah, we got a bottle. And it, it, can be, it can be your choice of a bottle, and we're happy to, we're happy to support that for you amazing, guys. Amazing, amazing, amazing. If we could send a bottle. Stop. Of, stop. Okay. Could we send the bottle to Dorothy Davis? Dorothy, are you on the line? Let's see, let's see. Is that Dorothy right there after like? Where's Dorothy? That's Dorothy, I can see her, she's raising yeah. her hand. Oh, yay! Hey, okay, Dorothy, great, okay, great, Dorothy. Great, great. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, so we, I mean, well, we have your addresses, so we'll mail it to you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, you're good, you're good. Yeah. Uh, so we'll mail it to you, and then, um, yeah, everyone, uh, it's been it's been a great time. Like, let us know what other questions you have. Yeah. If anybody if wants any, to stick around or ask questions, we're honestly and we're serious. Like, if stuff comes up later, let us know. Um, hit us on the info at richwinerva.com, and we're happy to uh, chat with you about anything that you need. Oh, the beach trip, Marion, we got you covered. I know you guys see me spitting a lot, but like this is literally what people do in the wine industry. You you. You drink a lot of wine and it, you, you, you learn to spit pretty properly. And I know that sounds crazy, but like, it, it's just part of the process. And I know it sounds terrible, but you drink and you- It's you, better than, it's sometimes, because since we have to drive. Yeah, yeah, of course. When you, when you got to do a lot of things and you're constantly just drinking wine, you, you, you learn to spit pretty well and you get it, coat your mouth and you, you just let it on out. But uh, Especially for longer tastings. Yeah. Sometimes we have to go through like 20 to 30 a day. So. Yeah, when I was, uh, I was working at a, a company and- Oh man, every Friday morning we had means at eight o'clock and, and it was, it was bad. I mean, you know, and we just, I couldn't do anything for the rest of the day just to be in New York. It was when I sold wine, but yeah. So if you ever have any questions about how to properly spit your wine out, just let me know. <laughs> well, I'm scrolling back. We can answer some of our early questions. I know like we're getting swamped with lots of great questions, but um, the one that really stuck out to me is a question, personal question for you both. Do you enjoy what you do? I can, I think we can tell yes, but you know, just confirm it for the rest of us. Yeah, we absolutely love it. I think that, um, well, just kind of, do we want to let folks know like how we're kind of like set up, like Lance is like clearly the wine guy here and Lance picks our inventory range tastings with, yeah. um, you know, the reps we source from about 15 distributors throughout, um, uh, uh, in Virginia who, um, send wine to Virginia, um, so in terms of curating the wine portfolio, doing our tastings and everything like that, that's Lance. And then I'm um, learning about wine. Like as we go, um, I sit more on like the, you know, like finance, like op side um, and events and we share events, like the event scope together and the media stuff together. So it's been great. I mean, we've learned so much so yeah. quickly yeah. just about, you know, like business ops, um, you know, how we want to present wine, like what wines we want to carry. Um, it's been a lot of fun. And then we get to meet a lot of cool people like yeah. along the way. Um, right now, especially like in this virtual environment, still like the dynamic, like our engagements have been pretty high because uh, folks, we get to do virtual tastings. We get to, you know, people, I'm serious, people really do call us and email us about like, you know, what's doing, what to yeah. think about. And we love that stuff. Um, so it's been a lot of fun for us. And people recommend wines that, I mean, if there's an endless Rolodex of labels out there. So, you know, we don't know all of it. Um, we're trying to learn, you know, the majority of it if we can and definitely have a, a fantastic selection for folks to choose from. But uh, it's been great because folks have recommended wines to us and we're like, oh man, if we can get our hands on it, we'll try it, we'll carry it. So it's definitely a two-way street within our operations, um, an inclusive environment. And we're just kind of I know we're happy. It's, it's been, it's been good. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun, a lot of hard work because yeah. we barely sleep, but yeah, I, it's worth it. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean like, you know, just, I'm going to keep it short. I mean, you know, like my, my, my bread and butter and my day job has been an actor and like, I've been blessed to have some opportunities and I'm not going to just like dive into that. But like when I was in New York, my, my, my survivor job was, was working in wine. I, I, I sold wine for a company and then I was blessed to open two wine shops in, in, in Brooklyn. And um, it, I, I, yeah, it's, it's been my, like my, my passion, my love. It, this is fun to me. Like I get to, 
I get to drink wine for like for a living, and uh, <laughs> um, and like it's it's it has its perks, it has its it has ups, it has downs. I do get tired of wine. Trust and believe, yeah. man. Like I, I I get tired of wine constantly. Like I love to drink it, and I love to learn about new things. But like when I'm at home, I love a good beer. I love a good you know whiskey on the rocks. Um, but yeah, I, I really do love what I'm doing. I think the next step for me right now, and just kind of pointing it out. So like, yes, I love it, but I'm also trying to further my career in wine. So I'm in my WSET class right now. I'm in level two. So I take my level three in December and January, and then I'll move on to my level four and then I'll get my diploma, which is a prerequisite for your master of wine course. And it, there's a lot to it. So like that kind of stuff makes me nervous, but at the end of the day, whatever, go big or go home. <laughs> love it. Absolutely yeah. love it. Again, it definitely shows. So we absolutely appreciate that. Um, I'm going to try to sift through some questions. Uh, I think the big one was what's the difference between organic wine and natural wine? Uh, so um, organic wine is, is, is very simple. No hermeticides, no pesticides, no chemicals in your vineyard, right? I'm going to leave this kind of very open to you all. And I want everybody just to go and do their homework on this. Natural wine does not have a certification. Okay. So when you go to look at natural wine, there is a very big discrepancy about it in the world. I like to think of natural wine as something as very simple as low sulfur. Like I told you guys, low SO2. Okay. Um, little to no intervention in the wine. Right. Um, and just um, doing the best that they can just to kind of uh, uh, clean farming practices, right? So like they usually have to be kind of certified organic and or working biodynamic. And then once you work with those three things and then roll down to low intervention in the wine and then go to low SO2, that kind of considers a natural wine. There's a lot of discrepancy out there right now. And Dana, I think just said it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's BS because it is like no one really, a lot of people are calling their wines natural wines and, and they're really not. Um, what I look for in a natural wine is like those three things, low SO2, minimal intervention, and just, uh, it, it, and just biodynamic, organic. Those two certifications really kind of set it off for me, and then those other two kind of follow behind it. It's a tough one to have be called natural wines. And if you look it up, I would look it up and just, and just see who the people out there that are make like pioneers in the game, and then like read about it a little bit. There's a book called Natural Wine. Um, and it's an orange book. If you guys ever want to go check it out, it's, it's, it's really awesome. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Cause I was wondering that a little bit too. So. Yeah. And, and one um, more thing, biodynamic is, is, is I like to think of it as like a, a practice of, uh, a, a method, right? So what, what is going into the earth is what's coming, you know, is what's helping produce the wine. So a lot of people use cow manures on their vineyards. Uh, they, they plant, they plant olives and they plant, um, they'll grow, um, honeybees to help, you know, uh, fertilize. Um, like that's, that's biodynamic to me is, is a very promising thing to me. Natural wine is, is its own thing. But what I really like about wine, I really love like a good biodynamic wine, something that's really focusing on the, on the earth. Awesome. Okay. Moving on. I, everybody, I can see like 20 messages. Um, mm -hmm. Rich Mind, if you guys have a time limit, let us know. Um, if not, we're just going to keep answering keep questions. Um, all right. What other local wineries do you carry? Take us a little bit down memory lane because I'm sure we'll hear maybe some uh, familiar names there. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. It's definitely a big well, one. Yeah. I'll give, you, I'll give you a couple. So Early Mountain is one of my favorites. Oh, um, we carry, so Brian is the winemaker at Early Mountain, but he also started his own vineyard at Lightwell Survey, which is in Shenandoah Valley. And Lightwell Survey is making some delicious wines, but he also, but they, they make those wines actually at Early Mountain. So those wines are delicious as well. We carry, um, uh, there's another wine I just bought and it's called, it's called R. Um, I'll show you really quickly. Um, and this is in, um, this is in Monticello, and they are practicing um, organic wines as well. And, and these are kind of new to our portfolio. Um, and this is a Monticello Red Blend, and it's in Lovingston, VA. Um, I, I, I can't give you too much about this wine just yet because they're so super new and they're so small production, um, but the wines are absolutely phenomenal. Um, absolutely phenomenal. We're working on carrying a lot more Virginia wines. I just got to do a little bit more vetting. I'm not going to lie. Like I, I have to do a little bit more vetting on like what I'm carrying and then just, 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 just trying to just move that conversation forward. Um, but yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, we had a couple questions about uh, the 
where the grapes were grown. Um, I saw a couple of times I wanted to know, are all of these wines estate grown? And you might have to, forgive me, explain to me what that would mean and uh, confirm whether all of the wines or some of the wines were yeah, in no. category. So basically when you say estate grown, basically they, they, the estate grows them. So let's just take, uh, let's take uh, from the Abor, the first one that we tasted, right? Like this is the Boar family vineyards. This is all estate grown fruit. Like they're not buying grapes from someone else and placing it into a bottle. So most wines that you get from like a supermarket or from like somebody like, you know, your kind of everyday wines, I guess that you get at like the grocery store. Those are, those are, those are not estate grown wines. They buy grapes, right? And then they, they, they get the grapes from someone else. They can do whatever they want with them and then they press it or they have the vineyard press it and then they kind of do whatever they want to do with it. But all of these wines that you tasted today, um, I can safely say, yes, they are estate grown. I will tell you that again, for Mina is large, but it's all estate grown. They're like a, 150 million, million um, you know, bottles, you know, liters produce. It's still all estate grown. They're just one of the largest, but it's all their estate. So um, yeah, all of these wines are estate grown. Okay. Excellent. Good to know. Yeah. Um, another question. Do you all have a food incubator in your building to put together a dinner? Um, as in one that, uh, I guess, like as one that we prepare, like food. Okay. So let me just say this. Sorry. <laughs> um, you don't want us preparing your food. <laughs> Um, so like, <laughs> um, like, you know, like cheese, like cheese and, you know, we could do like charcuterie, um, and like, you know, the proper like wine and cheese, um, pairing here, there is a social space to host events. Um, we have access to other social spaces around like Richmond city, um, by way of our network. So that's yeah. something that we're able to do like in our, in our specific, um, like office area, we can host up to six individuals, um, here privately for a small, uh, in-house tasting and happy to do food there. But in terms of like, uh, like meals, like, you know, if you want to do like a proper dinner, we do have fantastic partners who, um, will chef to our yeah. labels specifically and can do a fantastic tasting. Lance uh, hosted one the other week. Um, what is it called? Ba the Balancing Act. Yeah, we hosted yeah. one with the Virginia Wine and Spirits Academy. It was called Balancing Act. And she basically just, she, we, we, there's a guy that, his name is Manny. Uh, he runs a private chef company called Manny Eats. And we did a three, three, he did three small bites um, he, and he put them in little containers. And we did the kind of same thing that you guys all had tonight. And it was an awesome tasting. I mean, like, yeah. it was awesome. Yeah. And Tracy Waldron is, uh, the somebody asked earlier, who am I taking my WSET through? And it's with Tracy. It's with the Virginia Wine and Spirits Academy. And then in, in January, I take it with Capital Wine School in D.C. But that's who Tracy I'm working with. But she did a phenomenal job of pairing food to wine. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Still, we're nearing the end, um, Go ahead. Go. I think, but one more question I saw. How long do you let your reds breathe after opening them? I decant everything. Like, I, I'm, a, I, I'm a huge fan of just decanting everything. Whites, reds, I decant it all. But if let you, it breathe a little yeah, bit. Yeah, if you, if you have a decanter, um, we have a great one here. Sure. And, um, and, uh, and uh, let it air a bit. Yeah. Um, and I, there's... I decant, I decant everything. I literally love to put it in a decanter and just let it open up. But I will tell you this, when you decant your wines, it's, it, it doesn't make sense if you don't know what it tastes like before you decant it. So taste it, then decant it, then taste it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It doesn't make a big difference if you don't, like if you decant it and then, or let it breathe and you're like, oh, okay, that's great to let it breathe. Like, oh, this tastes so much better. You, you're going to get much more of a difference if you taste it first, right? Then let it breathe and then taste it again. And you'll be like, oh, Okay, like those are some of, those are like little like tips and tricks just that are like eye opening. Like everybody's like, oh, let my wine breathe. Like taste it first and then see if it's even, if you even want it to. Yeah, if you will. I will say one of my favorites. Um, when we get our hands on it, we carry it like the brown estate. Yeah. Um, you want to decant that for like two hours. Yeah, just let it breathe. You let it breathe. It really opens up and it has fantastic flavor. Tess, triple crossing beer is my favorite beer in Richmond. Oh, yeah, absolutely. What's the, what's the, what's triple crossing the Falcon smash Falcon is my smash, favorite yeah. beer in Richmond. They are the best brewery in Richmond. Hands down. Boom. <laughs> Set down. We've worked with them before and they're delicious. Sorry. I saw that question come across. No, that's okay. That's yeah. all right. Um, question from Karen. What's the geographic range for your online wine tastings? Oh, um, as long, as long as there's FedEx delivery in enough time, we'll mm -hmm. get you your yeah. sample kits. Yeah. Uh, what we, what we try to have, like a, a two week, you know, like a lead, especially if it's going to go over 10 to 15 individuals, just because we want to 
order the wine in mm. and make sure we time it appropriately to get it sent out to you guys. You have time to refrigerate it. So if it's something, uh, if it's small team stuff, it can happen quick, more quickly, but larger stuff like Victoria, we've been planning this for like, I think weeks, I think, you know, but which is a perfect amount of time to ensure we can get all the kits out. Um, so yeah, just let us know what you're thinking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, I'm going to take one last question and then we will wrap it up. Thank you, both of you, for staying on just a little extra for everyone who's still listening. Hope you're still having a good time. Uh, question for Lance What school are you taking your WSET through? I don't yeah. know if you answered this already. Sorry. Yeah, no, I, I, I touched on it a little bit. I'm taking it through uh, Virginia Wine and Spirits Academy here in Virginia uh, with Tracy, who's a good friend of mine. And we work with her. I actually did her right now. We actually did six bottles. Um, I, it, it may still be open. Um, but in Virginia, uh, um, the Virginia wine, it's the V A W S A. Um, and I'm taking it with Tracy. Uh, and then in, uh, and in January, I'll be taking the level three with, uh, Jay from Capital Wine School in DC. Um, I, I got a scholarship from those guys. Um, they, they, they like what we're doing. And Tracy's like been a big supporter of us. Like she's really put us out there because she is a master of wine. She uh, has owned a vineyard. Um, she has started her own label. She kind of saw what we were doing. Um, and yeah, so, um, you know, class is tough. I take my test on the 17th for level two, level three, I'll take a test. And then level four, it gets a little bit more into essay work. And I haven't been in school since 2011. And I really am nervous about it because <laughs> um, I don't know how I graduated UVA still. So yeah. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> Oh, you're going to do perfectly. Fine. Yeah, and, and Laura, that's a good question. Like sommelier and, and WSET is so different. Sommelier is like the 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 service the part. service part of it, right? Like I would love to become a SOM because it sounds so good, but the sommelier is, is so much more focused on the hospitality and service side and like the food industry and the restaurant industry. WSET is more focused on the wine education and business of wine. Um, so, you know, that's just kind of where I'm at. You know, I, I've worked in restaurant my whole life and I'm, I'm not going back, so. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your kind words, uh, your kind words, and all your support. Uh, again, uh, Lance, you're going to do perfectly fine. So I think with that being said, we are going to wrap up. Um, I still have like little drops of wine. Drink what you want. Man, if you yeah. drink all the wine tonight, you should be feeling good. Those are two ounce pours. So that was literally probably two and a half <laughs> glasses of wine that everybody got tonight. So if you drink all of them, yeah, you should. Feel all right. You should feel warm. Yeah, I, I certainly do. Like I told you all at the beginning, I had quite a big dinner in preparation for this. Otherwise, I wouldn't even be typing very well. So um, everybody, thank you so much once again for attending this event. Hope you had a wonderful time. Look out for a follow-up email with um, contact information uh, about Rich Wine, how you can order the discount code. Uh, everybody wants to know not just the wines that we tasted today, but your uh, local favorites, or just your favorites in general. So um, we're going to make sure we get all of that information over to you guys. So thank you very, very much. Um, uh, hopefully we will uh, see you at some future events. Um, just a plug, we do have a wine event with our Who's 2.0 committee. They're doing a wine and cheese event. So we'll send an email. Well, in the follow-up email, you'll learn a little bit about that wine event. Someone asked if we do wine Wednesdays often. We'll work on it. Yeah, we'll work. We, yeah. yeah. We, do, we have a wine, a weekly program. If yeah. you're, uh, if you're interested. Yeah. Like, Excellent. Like, thing talks about a membership. We do a monthly program as well, too, and also okay. a membership as well, too. So yeah. I dropped uh, Kristen's email. I dropped our info email, which goes to both of us, and I dropped our personal emails. And then I hashtagged our uh, our Instagram just to kind of if you guys want to see what we're doing. But I know Victoria is going to send a follow-up. Uh, okay. Let's send it to everyone. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, everyone. Jackie wants to know your names again one more time. Yeah. And, uh, an hour sorry. and two and a half glasses ago. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I am Kristen. Yep. Tell your last name. Kristen Gardner Beal. Yeah, Kristen Gardner Beal. So you can follow her. And I'm Lance Lemon. Like the fruit. And Chris is gonna, Chris is dropping. I'm putting uh, our contact, our contacts, and then also our Instagram really quick for you guys. So we we do DM pretty well, and like yeah. I know that sounds crazy, but like we we we, we, we see it kind of quick and um get back to you. Yep. Cool. All right, everyone. With that being said, we bid you good night. Um, hope you're yeah. feeling very well. Thank you again for joining us. Look out for more fun events, not just with the UVA Club of DC, but all of UVA clubs. Um, other regions are doing fun events like this. So keep an eye on your email. Just look exactly. out for media. Yeah, got lots of great stuff.
Thank you. Thank you. Wahoo, 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 wahoo